Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the 2018 West Coast Eagles season launch proudly presented by West Cape Howe Wines. And what a way to spend a Friday afternoon enjoying this view of Perth from our new home. It is spectacular and it's a historic time for football in this state. There's so much anticipation about what's to come beginning against the Sydney Swans at this venue. Yeah, so we have the uh, season launch here today. Uh, usually it's a breakfast, but it's a lunch, so I'm actually quite spewing because I didn't mind the uh, poached eggs. I'm a quite a poached egg kind of guy with a bit of avocado, but gonna have to settle for some lunch today, which is a bit unfortunate, but I'll uh, make do. I don't, I don't mind it. In the middle of the day, you don't get up as early, so um, I'm usually one of those guys that like to sleep in a bit, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, I'm really excited being at my first season launch. Um, it's a pretty daunting thing. There's a lot of important people here, but I'm just looking to, to introduce myself and meet some of the great people to make this club run efficiently. Ten new players landed in the Eagles' nest during the trade and draft period. We can't wait to see what they bring upon their arrival. A huge thank you to our past players who are presenting the Guernseys today and have worn those numbers with great pride during the 30-year history of the football club. An amazing feeling of recognition getting onto the stage and, and finally getting presented with my, my official jumper. It's something which I've grown up wanting to do, um, being a lifelong Eagle supporter and I can't wait for the opportunity. It was a long time ago now, about eight years ago now, so a bit old now. But uh, yeah, all the young boys, we've uh, worded them up and we said that they had to get up there and tell a bit of a story. So hopefully uh, none of them do that, but it'd be nice to see if they did. I think a couple of the blokes uh, have clued in that we've got to do a speech or something, but um, we're trying to avoid that at all costs, I think. We're really pleased with the draft this year and geez, they look young didn't they on, on stage, they look like babies but uh, the fact is a lot of those guys will play seniors at some stage this year and that really excites everyone including me but more importantly our leaders uh, have had really good blocks of uh, pre-season as well. It's a new era for us, it's an amazing stadium, amazing oval and I think it'll be an amazing experience for uh, both players and, and members who are, who are coming along next week, it'll be unbelievable. We're really excited to be able to play here. Yes, it's going to be you know 60,000. I was talking before. It's just it feels like a um, mini MCG type 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 feel pretty much. So um, we're really excited, and uh, we've had a couple of training sessions out here and a couple of practice matches, and we can't wait. I think our playing group's exciting. A lot of speed, a lot of young talent as well that you'll, that will be showcased throughout the year. So um, yeah, that's our expectation to, to make the eight, and um, it all starts next Sunday. Judging by my watch, not sure how many percentage wise are heading back to the office. Elliot Yeo would definitely not go back to uh, work after a long lunch. I think he's quite happy with the burgers and I think he might have one and might get a taste for another and just get a full belly and probably head on home for a nap. So I think he uh, would definitely be the one not go back to work. There's a few, definitely. I reckon Nick Nat, um, he wouldn't. But then also probably Brad Shepard. You know, he's the guy that likes to spend his afternoon heading over to Rotto, taking his boat out, also, you know, catching crayfish. So you could probably imagine that. The player that would not go back to work and leave at lunchtime would be Mark Lecraft because he probably does that anyway. Mm -hmm.